I always tell business owners like, where is the money? It's like Jerry Maguire, like show me the money. Like where is the money, right? And where are you gonna make the most money, the easiest and the fastest? And when you're borrowing money, that's where you wanna put that money first, especially in the beginning. Entrepreneurs who need financing face a lot of challenges getting the funds they need. Joseph Camberato learned this working in the mortgage industry. Many of his clients were small business owners, and a lot of them had questions about how to get a loan. That's why Joseph started National Business Capital. His goal was to streamline the business loan process and make it easier for entrepreneurs to connect with lenders. They've secured $2 billion in business financing since the company started in 2007. That experience makes Joseph a leading expert in how to get financing as a small business owner, and he's sharing that expertise with our listeners in this interview. Welcome to the Upflip Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Freeman. Joe, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Alex. Let's start from the very beginning, I guess. What is National Business Capital and what services do you offer? Yeah, great question. So National Business Capital is really a business lending platform for small business owners. So think of like the rocket mortgage meets match.com of business lending. And what I mean by that is business owners can apply at my company, National Business Capital, in one place and access over 75 lenders. We offer SBA loans, term loans, lines of credit, equipment financing, inventory loans, receivable lines, asset-based loans. I mean, everything that you would need for your business, you can apply for in one place. We've got great technology. So it's a digital app. You can do it from your phone or your desktop. You can securely upload your docs. But more importantly, besides great tech and making it fast and easy, we've got great people that work here, our business financing advisors that understand all the different lender guidelines, but also get business. And we work with all industries in all 50 states. So it's a lot of stuff, a lot of information. And we do that really well and really identify what your need is. You know, when you need funding in your business, you know, you have a challenge or an opportunity. And sometimes the opportunity is creating a cash flow challenge. So we'll talk through, understand what you're looking to get accomplished, explain which lending products may make sense. We can review everything internally and pretty confidently say, hey, this is what we believe you'll get approved for. And then we'll go and we'll do all the work for you. So you do nothing. And we really, you know, help you from application to funding and, you know, from following this streamlined, simplified process and more importantly, pulling all the right lenders in and matching people to the right lender because it's all about connecting to the right lender. We've helped secure over $2 billion now since we got started in 2007. And we've done over 27,000 transactions for all types of awesome entrepreneurs all across the country. Wow. Just an incredible amount of business in that amount of time. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, I want to kind of go back to kind of early in the process for a business owner, right? What are some of those important factors that a business owner should consider when beginning the process of applying for a business loan? What should they be thinking about at the start of the process? It always makes sense to really prepare. Just think in life and in business, folks that are more prepared, you know, seem to always do much better. And I understand business moves fast and things happen or opportunity sometimes just smacks you in the face out of nowhere and you got to just move. But if you know you're going into a slow period or you're not confident about next quarter or you're not confident about what's going on in the economy right now, you, know, you really want to apply before there's a downturn in your business or a challenge. It's almost like you want to apply almost when you don't need the money. Now, we work with all types of business owners in all types of situations, excellent credit to challenge credit, great cash flow to having some cash flow hiccups. So we work in all situations and we'll pull the right lender in for that. But I think it's important that you prepare for it, get ahead of it, really map out like what are the next 12 and 24 months look like in your business? What are your plans? Do you need funding for that? Have a little bit of a plan together. And if you're going to go into getting financing, lenders, really all lenders, banks and non-bank lenders, we have all these different types of lenders on our platform. Some are banks, some are non-banks. And a lot of them are just, you know, big institutions that lend a lot of money to businesses. You know, if you know that you're going to need money, really pay attention to your cash flow prior to whether it's keeping some money in your bank, maybe really tightening up and managing expenses. The better that your cash flow looks, usually probably the more money you'll get, sometimes better approval that you get. There's a lot of factors that get taken into consideration, but, you know, that type of planning prior to can be very helpful. Can you talk a little bit more about how revenue and cash flow impact approval odds, and then also how early stage startups that maybe aren't yet earning revenue improve their own success rate in that kind of environment? A lot of lenders, especially in startup, a lot of factors that a lot of people don't understand and what underwriters are looking at. But more importantly, 
a lot of people don't get that how important it is to go to the right lender. And that's really the service that we bring to the table. We're really a time-saving machine and really like a debt advisor and can explain to you and look at what's going on in your business and then say, hey, this is going to be the right lender to pull in. But it's okay if you're not turning a profit, but you can still not be turning a profit and still have got your cash flow under control. Maybe you had some big one-time you know, expenses that is showing a loss in your last month's financials, but you can talk about that. And maybe you've got some money that's in the company, you know, some equity. So even though you might have had a loss or two a month or a down month, you're still looking in good shape. But it all just depends on the lender and the lending product. Some lenders don't focus on that at all. Like some companies that are, you know, selling products and or services B2B can utilize a lender that will take those receivables and really focus into those and not necessarily focus what's going on with your business. They'll just want to understand what's like the plan, you know, what are your growth plans? There's lenders that again will just if you're buying equipment, they'll more focus on your credit, the type of equipment and not always dive deep into the financials of the business. And then there's lenders that are really focused on your very, very recent cash flow in the last three to six months. And they're going to focus more of like, what's going on in your bank account? Can you manage it? They'll look at you, maybe your financials or your last year's tax return, but they're going to look at what's going on currently in your bank statement. So there's a lot of different ways that different lenders will look at things. So it's important for a lot of lenders today, if it's just going to be something based off of cash flow, they're really going to want to see that you can manage those, you know, day-to-day things going on in your bank account. That's important. Some business owners are better at doing that than others. And I think a lot of people don't realize too, sometimes just having a talk with your vendors, if they can give you sometimes five to 15 more days on terms to pay them, if you could pick up another five to 15 days in paying your vendor. So maybe you're buying product if you get 15 days there. And if you can get your customers to pay you faster, you pick up 15 days there. Now you've just given yourself a 30 day window. And that can make a dramatic difference in your cash flow and can make a very big difference in the approval that you get. So there are things that you can do and think about. And sometimes just take some conversations with how you're collecting your money and how you're paying your money to your vendors. How important is the business plan document in the loan process? And is it important at all phases of a business or just for startups? How does that factor in here? Yeah, most lenders don't look at a business plan if you're in business already. You know, for the most part, once you start to get the bigger dollar sizes with bigger lenders that are going to have better rates, you know, better cost of capital, a million dollar plus approvals, they're more going to want to really look at projections and more just understand from you, like why you're borrowing the money what your plans are, how you're going to use the money and how you plan to grow the business. They're more going to want to hear that from you. So you need to be prepared for it. You need to put a projection statement together for like those larger transactions. Most lenders aren't necessarily looking at a business plan. If it is a startup situation, like it's a pure type of startup and you're going to use like an SBA loan. Yeah, they're going to want to see like a business plan. They're going to want to see some projections. They're going to want to understand how you can service the debt. They're going to want to understand how much money you can put into it. So that's really where a business plan will come into play. But if you're existing, you have revenues and there's plenty of lenders out there that will not require that. Is there anything that we haven't talked about yet that business owners should be aware of that they're going to need to prepare for the lending process? I don't think so. I I really think the biggest thing is because listen, it's easy to say, hey, pay attention to your cash flow and and manage it, manage your expenses. And but sometimes you don't have that luxury. Like something happens and you have to like move and you don't have the time to prepare. So again, I think if you know that there's going to be these periods throughout any year in your business that you need funding, you should really start to pay attention to that cash flow and maybe you can push certain things out that aren't necessary that make you look better on paper. But you know, I think what's really important is that you're using the right lending product for whatever it is that you're going to do. So I'll give you an example. We have clients all the time reach out to us. I need a lot of credit. Everybody wants a lot of credit and a lot of credit's great. You should have one in your business. Everyone should have a line of credit. I'm like, oh, cool. You want a line of credit? Great. We can absolutely help you with that. What are you looking to use the funds for? Like, oh, I've got this great deal on a piece of equipment. I've got this job. You know, I need to buy this equipment. It's great. But how about, you know, if we could get you equipment financing specifically for that equipment, did you know that we can do that over five years and usually like single digit type of interest rates? And a lot of times owners would be like, I didn't even know that. And, you know, so again, by using the right lender, a few things happen here. One, if it's equipment, construction equipment, so all the yellow and iron equipment, manufacturing equipment, automotive type of equipment, manufacturing, office, you know, equipment, restaurant equipment, any type of really, you know, piece of equipment, and even including office furniture and even restaurant furniture, you can finance all that stuff. So a lot of times people don't realize that. And 
And those have great terms. You can usually finance over five years, monthly payments with very low interest rates. And the cool thing is when you finance equipment, you also can still take advantage of depreciation. Obviously talk to your accountant about this and the laws around this are always changing or the rules around this are always changing. But a lot of times you can still finance. I think now it's up to 80% in year one. So you can really almost pick up a great tax credit and finance over five years monthly payments, really low rates. But what's really important is by using that product because you were buying equipment, by using a specific equipment lender, which we do these all the time, then what you've done is you've either left your cash flow available for a credit line or other types of financing where you've left your receivables unencumbered or without having a lien against receivables, there'll be a UCC filing, but it'll be against that piece of equipment in this example where the rest of your business is still open for financing. So in that example, it's like, yeah, we got you the funding for the equipment. Do you need a credit line to maybe you know help with hiring or manage the job or materials or receivables where you're going to put that equipment to work? And now you have used financing in the right way as a tool, and you can really maximize leveraging your company you know in the most efficient way. And it's very powerful. When we have someone come in, we do two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or half a million dollars of equipment financing and get them a $250,000 line of credit, now you're in a really great position with your business. And a lot of times the lines of credit are revolving, but they have you know different repayment structures that usually repay faster than financing that piece of equipment out for five years. So you actually wind up like really conserving your cash flow in a really good way too, which is really important. You can wind up with like double the amount of money and still paying possibly the same amount per month because of the longer term on the equipment. A quick reminder for our listeners that another key way entrepreneurs can prepare is to get in the right mindset for business ownership. Listen to our interview with Mindset Answer Man Cliff Ravenscroft in podcast episode 39 for tips on how to accomplish that. Joe, are there types of loans that are easier to get for businesses? And are there some that are like particularly challenging to actually get approval on? Yeah. Again, if you're not going to the right lender, right, it can be really challenging. Certain lenders love certain industries and certain lenders don't love certain industries. Certain lenders have certain minimum credit score requirements. Certain have certain revenue requirements. Some have certain time in business requirements. So again, getting to that right lender will make it a lot easier. And that's what we really do best and save a lot of time there. You know, typically an SBA loan, it's a longer process. We've got it down to about 45 to 60 days, which is very fast. If you're not working with someone that's really skilled in it, or typically just through a branch in a bank, it's more of like a 90 day plus process. So that's a little bit of a longer process. Getting, you know, a regular type of bank line of credit is usually like a three to six month type of process when working with the bank. There's other non-bank type of financing, whether a line of credit term loan or revenue-based financing that just moves a lot faster days versus months. So again, it's just all about going to that right lender and understanding the different options that are out there. But a lot of the bank and SBA stuff is just a longer process. And then obviously, once you get into the bigger loans, you know, million, two million, five million plus, it's just more uh, financials, more tax returns, debt schedules. There's just more things that you're going to need to apply. And I think you just have to understand that once you start looking to break half a million to a million bucks, the lender's going to ask for more documentations, and especially in this wild environment that we're in today. So be prepared and provide what they're asking for. If they're asking for more things, that's actually a good sign. It means they're still interested. If they weren't interested, they would just decline you. Now, you brought up a few different things that I have follow-up questions on, but the first one being, you mentioned that some lenders like some industries better. Are there certain industries that overall have higher approval odds? And for somebody that may find themselves working in one of the industries with lower approval odds, what advice might you have for them on securing financing? Yeah, so great question. Like medical industries, typically like doctors, dentists have a higher approval rate and there's a lot of different specialized programs out there. It's a professional type of business, accountant, medical, lawyers. There's a lot of specialized programs focus on them, but there's also a lot of school involved. There's a lot of commitment, licensing and things like that. So there's a lot of different options, a little bit easier. Some of the industries that are challenging, you know, right now trucking can be really challenging to get approved in place. We do it really well, but you have to really bring it to the right lender and those lenders are changing their guidelines. It almost feels like weekly right now. There's just been a a lot of things happening in that industry between some of the big companies getting really big, a lot of smaller individuals out there and fuel and things like that are going up and down constantly. So it's a really 
challenging industry. So those get a little bit more looked at and especially in a lot of the supply chain stuff that we just went through, they're really getting reviewed. And if you don't go to the right lender, you won't get approved or you just won't get approval. One of the other things I wanted to follow up on is you were talking about the different timelines that it can take to get loan approval. So the first question there is what factors into how long it might take to get approval on a loan? Usually the size, you know, definitely is a factor and then how clean or not clean the situation is. So if you have a little bit more challenge credits, some challenge cash flow, we might have to work with a few different lenders and have some more conversations and really figure out how to get a deal done and structured. Listen, I mean, we're able to get small business loans, term loans, probably up to about half a million dollars done in one to three business days, which is pretty fast. Half a million to a million is probably more of like a three to five day process and a million plus million to 5 million realistically is probably like a five to 10 day type of a process, which all of those timelines I gave you are, are fast. And that's obviously if you apply, you have all your paperwork together and you send us a full package immediately. But with all those different loan sizes that I just gave you, we've gotten in all those different categories of sizes that I gave you, we've gotten many deals done per month that in those time frames. Now, in the situation where a business does find that they need funding relatively quickly, what should they be preparing when they don't need the money quickly, besides maybe, as you mentioned earlier, applying almost before you need the money? What should they be doing to make sure that if they do find themselves in a cash crunch kind of situation, they can get approved quickly? We'll be ready to fill out usually for us, fill out an application. Up to 250000 we can look at the last six months of your bank statements and move really fast. We may need last year's tax return but once you break 250000 we usually need last year's tax return, a copy of last year's financials, profit loss and balance sheet, and a year-to-date profit loss and balance sheet. And that's pretty much up to 250, you know, to a million. A million plus will pretty much need those same things, tax return, last year, year-to-date financials, six months of bank statements. Sometimes certain lenders want to look at a debt schedule, and sometimes we may want to look at a personal financial statement. But up to about 5 million bucks, last year's tax return, last year's financials, year date financials, and probably, you know, over a million like AR, AP aging report. And from there, we should be able to pretty much, you know, move through a process. And that's why too, a lot of owners, you'd be surprised and decent sized companies, you know, companies doing 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, even 20 million a year sometimes won't have their financials up to date. And I just can't tell you how important that is. We take it so seriously. We invested in a company called Bookkeeper 360. And that's like an outsourced bookkeeping service and has a great online platform. And you really need to keep your financials up to date because if you look for something over $250,000, you're going to need those and you're going to need them on demand. And a lot of times some owners do them on a quarterly basis, some half a year, some don't keep up to date with them and some are great at doing it, right? But it's always like, oh my God, I've got an opportunity and it's March 30th right now and I don't have my financials done for January and February. And if you want to get the best approval and you want to move quickly, you want to have those at your disposal. So I can't tell you how important that is. And you know, if you're having like your accountant do it, you should pull in a bookkeeping service and it's not even expensive. You could have that stuff up to date and in a time of need, it's a game changer. You mentioned SBA loans a little bit earlier. Can we dive into kind of what the world of SBA loans are? So can you talk about first, I guess, just the difference between a traditional loan and an SBA loan? An SBA loan is meant for businesses. It's backed by the government. A bank or an SBA lender will actually fund the deal. They underwrite it according to the SBA guidelines. If you were to default on the loan, you know, the SBA basically insures a decent percentage of the loan. But there's two SBA type of products. There's a 7A loan product, which you can get approved all the way up to $5 million without real estate. Your business needs to be profitable. You need to have typically a 640, 650, 660 plus FICO score. You need to be profitable uh, recently. And the loan will get, basically get approved based on the amount of profit and how much that profit can support X amount of debt. So if you're looking for half a million bucks, your profitability will have to be able to support a half a million dollar payment. When you apply for an SBA loan, you have to be in business for at least two years. If you're in business already, you have to be in business for two years. If you're in business for more than that, then you'll need to provide three years of your business tax returns, personal tax returns, and then the last three years of your financial statements and a year-to-date financial statement. 
along with a debt schedule and a personal financial statement. And a personal financial statement is just a list of all your personal assets and liabilities. You also, which is cool, a lot of people don't know this, you can buy a business if you don't own a business. You'd have some sort of a resume that would make the lender feel confident that you can run this business. So maybe you were an employee at a business and the owner's looking to age and sell out, or you've been a manager at ABC Inc. and you know you want to go buy ABC Inc. like company, but you can buy a business without owning one. You have to put down, you know, typically 10 to 15%. And as long as that business is profitable and can support the debt, you can actually go and buy a business without owning one. Most people don't know that. And then the other type of SBA loan is a 504 SBA loan that's meant to purchase real estate. You only have to put down, you know, typically 10 to 15% and you can go and purchase real estate. And also like if you found a business with real estate, you you can use that to combine and buy both the business and the actual real estate. So another really great product. If you're going to buy a building, so just like SBA versus like a non-SBA loan through a bank, or if you're going to go buy a piece of real estate with most commercial lenders or banks, you know, you typically have to put down 20 to 25%. That's pretty standard, sometimes even more in this market. And then just getting like a bank deal over an SBA deal, you're still going to have to apply with probably the same type of documentation. Every bank's just got their own criteria and guidelines that they'll follow. And it's usually going to be a lot tougher than the SBA because the bank's lending it and it's not guaranteed by the SBA. Now, is there any reason why you would need to apply for a traditional loan before an SBA loan? Or can you do an SBA loan and then later get a traditional loan? How does that kind of like timeline work? And or what do you recommend? Well, if you got an SBA loan, then if you wanted to get a bank loan, you'd have to refinance it. I think what's really important here is like, what are you using the money for? So people assume that an SBA loan is the best loan for their business because typically 7A is a 10-year repayment term. The rates are typically lower. Right now, prime rates are up. So as we're doing this podcast, prime rate is at 7.75%. An SBA loan, you can be approved for like prime plus two or even 2.75%. Let's just for simple math, prime plus 2% right now, an SBA loan is like 9.75%. It could even be a little bit higher as the prime rate goes down, the rate will go down. But that's still in compared to still, you know, that's just what the rates are right now. But what is important is, you know, when you do take out an SBA loan or a bank loan, right, is the bank's going to file a UCC typically against all of your receivables if you own your real estate against your real estate and any equipment and everything. So if you're looking like your business and you're in high growth and you need constant access to capital, you really want to explore and understand the different options because an SBA loan is great. It's over 10 years. But if you're like, I need just like to buy and sell inventory, you might want to look at like a line of credit and not utilize an SBA deal. Or if you're buying equipment, just an equipment lender to not lock up your whole business and all of your receivables because it can restrict you with other type of lending products. That is really important to understand if you're about to be in growth mode or you need a credit line to just fuel like short-term cash flow gaps. There's other products that are worth looking at where you won't lock up your business. And, you know, if you borrow money over 10 years, it's a long repayment period, which is great. But if you borrow that and you're growing and you're not able to pay that off or refinance out of it with another lender, then you could be kind of stuck there and not be able to access other types of capital. If someone's been denied a traditional loan, is that going to impact their approval odds for an SBA loan? It all depends. There's so many reasons with that. It's really hard to give a straight answer on it because every bank has got their own type of guidelines and criteria. You could be turned down from like your local bank, but still qualify for an SBA loan. You could be turned down from a bank for an SBA loan and apply another SBA lender that may be okay with the deal. So it's really interesting and it's confusing to be honest. And it's the exact reason why I created National Business Capital and and really why we're in business and the guidelines and stuff really just change so much that it's even hard for us to keep up. And this is what we do every single day. We see thousands of applications per month and we really get to see what lenders are doing in real time and keeping up with it is a challenge with themselves. So this is going to bring us to a section of our show that we call our Fan Blitz questions. These come from our YouTube community. You can go to youtube.com slash upflip and join the community and post questions to future podcast guests there. Joe, I've got seven questions for you. We're going to try and do a rapid fire here. So seven questions in about 80 seconds. Yeah, I love it. All right, here we go. First one, if something happens to you, what happens to the business? 
I've got a great team. Hopefully nothing happens to me, but I've got a great team. I've built my business in a really great structured way and I'm not into the day-to-day. And my whole goal is for National Business Capital to live many, many years beyond me. If you could change one thing about your business, what would it be? If I could change one thing about my business, we don't have a ton of remote workers. We've been all in office, but that's been something that we've been thinking about doing more of and some interesting ideas there. What's the biggest misconception people have about what you do, you personally or the business? I think people think that it's like everyone sees the player in the field, right? They don't see all the things that kind of happened leading up to where I am today. There was a lot of hard work, sacrifice, personal time sacrifice, sacrifice with you know, maybe having fun, going out, different things. So there's just a lot of sacrifice to get where I am. And listen, I started the company 15 years ago and I feel like I'm just getting started. So I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, you're the owner, you just get to hang out, but things constantly change and you got to keep shifting with the market and help steer up the ship. And I think, especially in today's world, a lot of people don't realize, I think, the time it takes to build something. Would you do business with yourself if you were a customer? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. We have, I think, over like 3,000 five-star reviews online between Trustpilot and Google. and They're all awesome. If you could get one celebrity to utilize national business capital, who would it be? That's a good one. I guess it would be probably a celebrity that's great in business. I probably would pick Tony Robbins because he's just awesome and he's like a celebrity in his own way. And it also like really, most people don't realize he's just crushed it in business. Yeah, I would go with him. If there was a movie made about your journey, what would the title be? (laughs) That's funny. Probably wow. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love it. Last one here, and this maybe is a similar answer to the previous question here, but if you could have anyone in the world endorse your business, who would it be and why? I would go with Tony Robbins. I'm a big fan. I've done a lot of his programs, Business Mastery, It With Destiny, UPW, and I was a Platt partner. And, you know, just what he's done and created. And he just does a lot really geared towards businesses and business owners. And of course, mindset. And I think really business is a big part of it is really mindset. So, you know, I definitely would pick him hands down. That is going to do it for our Fan Blitz questions. Listeners out there, let us know what you think about this episode by reviewing us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Joe, a few more questions for me. We're going into the section of the show that I'm going to call the vocab section, just because there's so many different products and things. And I know that no one's going to leave this show an expert necessarily in the world of business financing, but hopefully we can make them a little bit smarter for when they do call national business capital. They know more specifically about what they're looking for. So I guess let's, to kick this off, can you talk about the difference between secured loans and unsecured loans? And if one or the other is a better option for borrowers? Yeah, that's a good question because it actually comes up a lot. So secured loan is usually secured by collateral. Now, what most people think when they think collateral is they think of real estate or maybe like a big piece of equipment or machinery. Now, those are absolute collaterals, but inventory can be considered collateral and quality B2B receivables can actually be considered collateral. So for instance, if you're a business and you're selling products to Amazon and Walmart, when you sell their product, you invoice them and then they pay you in 30 or 60 days. That invoice is actually a piece of collateral that you can leverage and lend against it. So if you're going to get a secured type of loan, you're going to need to have one of those collaterals, real estate, equipment, inventory, or uh, B2B receivables. And listen, there's a lot of great products out there for a secured loan or line of credit. Unsecured basically means there's not real estate, there isn't most likely isn't B2B receivables, inventory, even if there is, the lender's not taking it into any consideration and they're purely just looking at your cash flow. So there's both of them are really great products and it just all depends on like, if you don't have the collateral, like I mentioned, then, you know, you don't have an option. You'd have to go the unsecured route and that's okay. There's great products out there for that. Now, can you talk about the difference between a term loan and a line of credit and when something might be the right choice for a borrower? Yeah, so term loan is just a set repayment period. Typically today, it'll be 12, 24 months to no longer than 10 years for the most part. Term loans are great for it's like when you know, hey, I'm going to do something. I've got this project, this thing, this renovation in my business. And you know what? I know what I need to do. I know what the cost is. And I just want to do this one thing. And I want this period to pay it back. And that's my monthly payment. I'm comfortable with it. That's when you go to term loan. If you're buying like inventory, if you're 
constantly needing like, you know, a lot of times in like construction or transportation, there's always these cash flow gaps between waiting to get paid. That's when you really would want to use a line of credit because it's ongoing. All right. I just did a bunch of work. I know I'm going to have a cash flow gap, leverage the line, get some money into my business. Okay. Job's done. Cash flow caught up pay it back and then rinse and repeat next month or the month after or whenever is needed. So it's really a great question and really important. And then again, if you're buying equipment, you probably don't want to use either of those products. You want to use some sort of equipment financing product that's specific to the equipment. So you still have the availability for a line or a term loan. All right. We're going to get to equipment loans in just a moment, but I want to ask about merchant cash advances first. Can you talk about what those are and perhaps if it's better to try and get them directly from a merchant or from a third party? Well, you would get them from a lender, right? So, but Merchant Cash Advance has like a negative connotation around it. There are some great lenders that do Merchant Cash Advance and there are some costly lenders that do Merchant Cash Advance. And that product can also be called revenue-based financing. It's really all within the same. There are some great products out there with like longer repayment terms and lower rates today and that can give some term loan products actually a run for its money. What most people don't know about Merchant Cash Advance is if you actually get a good rate and a good term, it's a great product because it's actually not personally guaranteed. So it actually really is a great product and can be really flexible. It all just depends on what are you able to get approved for, right? So just knowing what your options are. If you're able to get a term loan product that's longer term, lower rate, then that's probably the product for you. If you're having an issue getting a term loan product or a line of credit, and you don't have the collateral, like I mentioned, B2B receivables, uh, equipment, inventory, merchant cash advance with the right lender and the right product can actually be a really great option and is something that you should definitely consider when you're looking for financing. Let's talk about equipment loans. Can you talk about, are there certain types of businesses that should pursue equipment loans or is anybody that needs to buy a large piece of equipment that that's a loan they should be looking into? 100%. If you're buying equipment, as long as the equipment makes sense and is for your business, right? But yeah, if you're buying equipment, you should absolutely be using equipment financing. Super important for all the reasons I've mentioned throughout this podcast. When you use equipment, it's typically with most of those deals, you can finance it over two, three, five years, sometimes even a little bit longer. Monthly payments, usually single digit rates are very competitive rates to compare to other products. You can still choose to depreciate the equipment. Again, talk to your accountant about that. But you know, most importantly, when you finance equipment, you're not locking up all the cash flow in your business. So you can still go and get a line of credit or a term loan or another type of financing product for working capital to grow your business to make maybe fuel that equipment or the jobs to run that equipment or the marketing to use that equipment for. So really, really important. I see so many owners not do this and it's a big miss. A lot of them just don't understand it. The process is a few days longer, but it's just so worth it. Now, is there like a minimum dollar amount that someone should be thinking about? Like, is this something that even if, you know, you need like maybe a couple thousand dollars worth of equipment or is this a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment kind of move? No, listen, I mean, if it's five, 10 grand and you're like, you know, I just, I want to pay it off in 12, 24 months at, all right, maybe a term loan product and just knock it out, get it done quick. But you know, a lot of the equipment lenders will do, you know, 10, 25, 50 K, 100 K. I think once you start, it all depends on your business and the size of it, right? So 25 to 50 K to one business might be a small loan that you just want to pay off in a year versus another business that might be like a big loan for them, right? So I think it all depends on the size of your company. But, you know, listen, if you're able to finance something over five years at single digit rates versus maybe something over a year or two with higher rates, then obviously the equipment is going to make more sense for you. Now, so we just kind of ran our way through a whole bunch of different business loan products, but people can also use personal loans to get a business started. When is that a good idea? And what factors should someone consider before taking out a personal loan for business expenses? Well, if you're in business already, there's no reason to take out a personal loan. You can leverage the business. And if you're in business already or at any point, when you use a personal loan, you can't write off that interest. So it's something to keep in mind when you do take a business financing product, you can write that interest off. So really, really important to keep in mind. When you take a personal loan, it's going to show up on your personal credit. Typically, when you take out a business financing product, it's not going to show up in your personal credit, which is good. So it's another thing to take into consideration. And you also really want to do everything and anything you can to build business credit within your business. So you should always take the business financing product when you can and really try and separate your personal from the business. I think that's really important even if the rates are better, like you're better off paying a little bit more and just keeping your personal stuff separated, your house separated anytime you can. Things happen. 
economies change, things can change quickly if you keep your personal life out of it long term. It's a great move. Any smart business owner, entrepreneur will tell you that. Getting a business going, it's the hardest thing, right? There's not really a lot of lending products out there to start something, especially from nothing. Now, if you were like, I want to get a business, I want to own my own business, you really should be looking to buy an existing business because you can use SBA and you only have to put down like 10%. It's kind of like a no brainer, right? But If SBA is not an option for whatever reasons, or listen, when I got started, there wasn't a national business capital to buy. I basically invented this whole idea of this platform in one place to apply. There wasn't something to go out and purchase. So I had to like create it on my own and I had to leverage my personal credit, credit cards, you name it to get the business going. Some people say you should go out and raise money and raise equity. There's a lot of personal opinions around this. There's definitely power in raising some equity. But if you're able to get something going where you use a personal loan of your credit cards, yeah, the risk is that you're taking out this personal debt. And if it fails, you've got all this personal debt, which is a true story. But if it works, then you own the whole business and all the equity. If you go and raise equity, you're going to give up a piece of the pie. Sometimes it's a balance of some personal debt and some equity, and you you really should consider all of those options. And if you're going to raise equity, sometimes you can raise it from people that have been there and done it before. That can also provide other value to your business as like an advisor advisor, coach, or maybe leverage their own relationships. So something to look at and consider. But, you know, depending on the business, raising equity may make no sense. And it may make sense to just, you know, use your personal credit, get it started. And then as soon as you get it started, you get a cash flow and you only need to be six to 12 months in, you can start to pull in a business lender and transition over from your personal to leveraging the business to fuel the future growth. How does national business capital factor in personal credit scores? when helping people find business loans? So pretty much all lenders today will always look at your personal credit score. You know, there are some products out there, and we talked about secured earlier, where there's B2B receivables, equipment, real estate, inventory, where personal credit can get a little bit less ignored. But for the most part, all lenders will look at personal credit. And then again, it all goes back to the right lender. If you've got challenge credit because you did that while building your business, we get it. There's lenders out there that get it. They're going to understand where you are now, more importantly, where you're going. And there's still options out there. If you've got excellent credit, then you've got excellent credit and always makes everything easier. Is there a percentage of a business's revenue that you would recommend devoting to loan payments? And what is the level of debt where you start to see businesses struggle? That's a tough question because it's probably an important one because it's not about the gross revenue. It's about the net income, right? So you could have a company doing 10 million in gross sales, but they're making $100,000 a year in profit. You could have a company doing a million a year in sales and they're doing half a million a year in profit. So it really comes down to that profit and it's hard to put a percentage on that because as you're growing your business, there's always these peaks and valleys of like growing, doubling down on investing, whether it's through hiring people, marketing, technology builds, and buying a bunch of inventory, taking some risk, whatever it is, there's always going to be these peaks and valleys in your business growth where your debt payments to profit will fluctuate. So it's hard to really say what that makes sense. I think what's really important, if you're borrowing money, if you're going to use money, put it to work in things that are going to give you your fastest returns, are going to make more money. And I think a lot of times business owners, especially the visionary ones, you've got this big vision and your vision's spot on and you're 100% right in what you're doing, but you got to put together an order of what you're going to do first and what's the most profitable first and what's like a nice to have versus like this is a must to have in the business right now. And especially when you're getting going, I always tell business owners like, where is the money? It's like Jerry Maguire, like show me the money, like where's the money, right? And where are you going to make the most money, the easiest and the fastest? And when you're borrowing money, that's where you want to put that money first, especially in the beginning. If you don't pay attention to profit, and doing things are going to generate more money. If you're like, oh, I want to build out this fancy thing, or I don't love how the website came out. I want to redo that. Well, like, who cares? Like, if the website's good enough, or your logo is good enough, or the tech that you're doing, it, it's getting by right now, but you know, you really would love to build this other thing. Those are great things, but what actions are you going to do where you can put that money to work that you just borrowed to help you make more money right now? Super important and very important in the beginning. If you could pick the one thing that listeners take away from this interview, what would it be? 
Success doesn't happen overnight. Think about your business in five and 10 year increments. It's amazing what you can do in five to 10 years and have more patience. I wish I did in the beginning. Sometimes you're working hard and you don't feel like you're moving the needle. And then all of a sudden you have a big increase and you look back and you go, wow, I'm so glad we did all that work. So just stick with it, keep fighting through it. And most importantly, don't be afraid to change and adapt. The strong survive, the adaptable thrives. What's your favorite business book and why? My favorite business book is Good to Great and The E-Myth Revisited. If you're just getting going in business, The E-Myth Revisited is really important. It just talks about how to put processes and systems in place and how to like go from owning a job to owning a business. And Good to Great is just important about having the right people in your business and on the bus. And then the book Traction by Gino Wickman. I know you just asked me for one, but those are my three favorite. I think they're all very important. Love it. <laughs> Where can people learn more about you, Joe, and National Business Capital? Yeah, so check out National Business Capital. Go to nationalbusinesscapital.com. You can check it out there. You can speak to my team. If you have questions, we're very easy to work with. We're happy to answer your questions and help get you prepared. And if you want to follow me and stay up to date, um, you can follow me on YouTube or LinkedIn. And it's very simple. It's at Grow by Joe. And on YouTube, there's a ton of videos and stuff where I talk about financing and all these different things that are happening in real time. That is going to do it for this episode of the Upflip Podcast. Listeners, don't forget, there are tons of other knowledge resources on Upflip, including the hub where you can learn how to start a business. And over on our blog, we've got tips and information for all stages of a business's life and growth. Joe Camperato of National Business Capital, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. And thanks for all you guys are doing for business owners out there. Great stuff. 